It was a cold day in November 1963. The USSR had been closely watching the United States. Tensions were high between the two superpowers. The world held its breath, waiting for what would come next. Then, on November 22, shocking news broke out. President John F. Kennedy had been assassinated in Dallas, Texas. This tragic event sent shockwaves throughout the world, including the Soviet Union. The initial reaction of the Soviet Union was one of disbelief and confusion. Some thought it was a hoax or a terrible mistake in reporting. Others wondered if it could have been an act of provocation by some rogue element within their own ranks or even by another nation. As reality set in and confirmation of JFK's assassination became undeniable, fear began to grip Soviet leaders' hearts as well as ordinary citizens. They knew that such an event could potentially escalate into nuclear war if not handled carefully. The KGB immediately launched an investigation into whether any of its agents or contacts had anything to do with the events. And the answer was no. The upper echelon of the Soviet government would have been comforted. But then an American Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested. And he was a Marxist who used to live in the USSR. The KGB investigated again and discovered that they never at any point tried to recruit him while he lived there. Since he was seen as unreliable, Nikita Khrushchev was the leader of the USSR at that time. Known for his fiery speeches and confrontational demeanor with Western leaders, but still Khrushchev and his wife visited Washington, D.C. and stayed at the White House. The Kennedys took them to a Broadway play, and they even almost negotiated a peaceful solution to the Cuban Missile Crisis in their letters. After he received official word of Kennedy's assassination through diplomatic channels from Washington, D.C. late on November 22, Khrushchev immediately called a meeting with his inner circle at the Kremlin to discuss this unprecedented development and its potential ramifications for U.S.-Soviet relations as well as global stability overall. During this tense meeting, Khrushchev expressed his shock over JFK's death and offered condolences to Jacqueline Kennedy, through diplomatic channels despite their ideological differences with her husband's administration, during his short tenure as president thus far. He knew full well that this tragedy represented not only a personal loss but also a potential turning point in history which could potentially result in even more tragic consequences if not handled delicately. The Soviet leadership decided to observe a three-day mourning period for JFK out of respect for the slain leader and his family as well as the American people. This gesture was symbolic of the USSR's desire to maintain a sense of stability in a world teetering on the brink of chaos. In an effort to demonstrate that they had no hand in JFK's assassination, Soviet leaders reached out to their American counterparts offering assistance with investigating this horrific crime. They wanted to ensure that no one could point fingers at them or use this incident as an excuse for further escalating tensions between the two nations. Despite their initial shock and sadness, some Kremlin hardliners saw opportunity in JFK's death. They believed that with his passing, there might be a chance for stronger U.S.-Soviet relations. They knew that Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson was now taking over as president and hoped he might be more amenable to negotiating with them on key issues, such as arms control, space exploration cooperation and other matters where mutual interests could be found despite ideological differences between both nations' respective governments at that time. Also their hope was that Johnson would prove same agreements as Kennedy, which included events like Bay of Pigs invasion fiasco, Cuban Missile Crisis standoff. While it is impossible to know how history would have unfolded if JFK survived his assassination attempt, it is clear that reactions from Moscow upon learning about this tragic news were mixed. From shock and sorrow over losing a formidable adversary, who could have potentially become an ally under certain circumstances. Fear over potential consequences if suspicions arose regarding Soviet involvement somehow. Hope for better relations ahead under new US leadership, amidst great uncertainty surrounding future global events at large during those tumultuous Cold War years, where anything seemed possible while nothing was guaranteed beforehand, whatsoever.